Hey, this is Joe with Grow Up Build It, and today I'm going to tell you how to test your soil's drainage. Now, knowing how well your soil drains water is very important for anyone to know who wants to landscape the yard with flowers, trees, shrubs, um, because matching the soil drainage to the plant type is important for it to survive. It becomes even more important if you're a vegetable gardener, because they pretty much all need well-drained soil. It can also give you an indication as to what kind of soil you have, whether it's clay or just overly compacted. Um, so this will be a process and method for quantifiably determining your soil's drainage, telling you what the you know what's good and what's bad, and then some ways to improve it. Now, at the end, I'll go into a detailed discussion of my results and my situation. Um, but there will be a little uh, set of jump links in the description if you're in a hurry, a little digital table of contents, if you will. Um, but otherwise, this is going to be part of a little short playlist my wife and I will compile on our situation with our vegetable garden. We're just backyard suburban gardeners. We have horrible crap inorganic clay, or well, rocky soil, and we've taken great steps to improve it. And so we're just kind of trying to share those with you. Um, you know, we're not homesteaders. We don't do canning. Um, but anyways, let's get into it. So for materials required, the first thing you're going to need is a shovel. I like a flat garden spade because you want the walls, walls of your hole to be vertical. Uh, then you're going to need a tape measure. Bonus points if you have metric on there because it'll make the math easier. You're going to need a scrap board or a stick or something to lay across the hole. And then we're going to need a five gallon bucket or a hose to get the uh, water into your hole. Um, and you're going to need uh, time. You're going to need not just a stopwatch, but also time, because this test takes, you know, you have to be available to go take readings for up to a day, maybe. But step one is going to be to dig a one foot hole by one foot deep, and that's around 30 centimeters. Try to keep the walls of the hole vertical. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's round or rectangular necessarily, but, uh, you know, just keep it vertical. Now, as you start digging down deep, I went from nice soil to this chunkier, harder stuff to dig. As I go further deep, it gets really bad. It's, it's really compacted. It's smooth sides indicate that I got clay or hard pan. Um, and this is a really, I'm going to interrupt and tell you, this is a really good time to take some soil samples at these different layers in case you ever wanted to actually figure out exactly how much clay, sand, and silt you have in your soil with the mason jar test. I'll have a video within two weeks on this one up on our channel, so you could uh, check out the cards on the right. If you're watching this later, it'll be there. But uh, anyways, the next step in the afternoon before the test, we're going to fill the hole with water and let it drain overnight. You want it to drain completely down. Um, the reason why we're doing this is this will saturate the walls and the hole with water. And that way, when we do our real test the next morning, we know that uh, um, it'll really be measuring drainage and not absorption. So step three is the next day, fill that hole with water again. Only this time, now we're going to start taking some data. And... What I do is I throw a stick across the hole, and then I'll take a tape measure and measure the distance from the water to the bottom of the stick. Um, you could use a yard stick or meter stick and just stab it down into the hole, but you better have a very consistent hole, and um, also uh, you better hope that the bottom doesn't get squishy. So for me, it seems to be more repeatable to um, go from the water to the stick across the hole. But you're going to start measuring your data and recording it every hour or as close to every hour as you can to keep the math easy. Um, and it's going to take, I mean, for me, it, it went overnight. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I like trying to help you out and answer them. And also, um, if you want a Cliff Notes version of this, there is an article in the description below. Um, or you could just Google Grow It, Build It, Soil Drainage, and it'll take you right to the article where it gives you these steps. But uh, record all your data. And yes, you saw me doing that at night and the next morning. You're going to do this until the soil is completely drained. Um, but once we're going to, once we go to calculate the drop, we're going to do it every hour and overall. So you take the difference in height from one hour from the previous hour divided by the time between them. Um, so you do it every hour, like this formula shows, and do it overall. And again, our article will have more on this if you need help or unit conversions or something. Um, but the results, if you drain less than one inch an hour, which is two and a half centimeters, it's too slow. You could have really soggy soil that could rot roots of most plants. If it's one to three inches, it's good, with two inches being ideal. Greater than four inches per hour means you're most likely going to have it drain too fast and be prone to having a drought. Now, so how to improve stuff? Well, if you have uh, poor drainage, it's draining slow, you can top dress the entire thing with compost. If it's a flat garden, if it's uh, sloped or something, you could do it more locally. Um, compost really just breaks up uh, clay. If you till it in or top dress, either one will work. 
if you have sandy soil, adding compost again will be very helpful in that it will hold water better. And you can do that very locally wherever you planted a plant even. Um, if you want to learn how to make compost, look in the top right. There'll be a video card. I have a very good video on getting started on building compost. Um, okay, so this was basically the video on how to do the test. This is that portion. If, now we're going to dive into my results if you want to see that. So the total drainage for me was 0.35 inches an hour, um, which is bad. Based on the results, that's bad. But you guys saw all my happy vegetable plants. So what's going on? Well, if we look more deeply, the top four inches drained well at uh, just under two inches an hour. The next four inches drained 0.4 inches an hour, which is bad. And the bottom, like at, once I got past nine inches, I basically had no drainage. Um, it, it basically stopped. It was hard pan compaction. So according to all the internet sources, I shouldn't be able to grow a darn thing. But I do. You saw the footage. I have happy, big vegetable plants that grow just fine. So what's going on? Well, we're going to dive into it. There are two things um, that I think are, are the reason why I do okay with uh, vegetables. All right, so the first thing, probably the most important one, though, we're going to investigate is if we sketch out my three layers of soil based on the drainage. So the top layer of two inches an hour, the middle layer of 0.4, and the bottom of, of an eighth. Well, if rain comes in, it's going to drain right through that top layer, no problem, and then it's going to run into the second layer, which will drain slowly. And then if I have that much rain beyond there, it's just going to saturate the top and middle layers, and any plants with roots there will probably die of root rot. Um, so that's clearly not happening in my case. So why is that? Well, if I resketch these layers of soil again, and uh, we try to figure it out, there it is. I'm on a slope, which you guys didn't know that. But um, sloped ground, uniform ground, I'm going to have rain come in, it's going to hit those hard layers, and then it's going to drain on those hard layers downhill. That's what I think is happening. Um, to give you a visual as to how much of a slope I have, uh, which I was actually quite nervous about gardening on the slope at first. I mean, just wasn't sure if maybe I'd have a problem with erosion or whatnot. Um, but uh, it's proved to be a benefit for me because I would probably have some serious drainage issues. Um, but uh, um, anyways, this is the one, and I'm really like kind of on a sphere, is that it's draining from two different directions. Um, okay, so that's the first thing that I'm doing that's helping me garden uh, well. What's the second thing? Well, I mentioned in the uh, intro that we have horrible, inorganic, rocky soil that's just not nice. Um, you know, this was a suburban backyard for almost 20 years before we moved in. You know, bulldozers going over it and backfilling crap soil, and here it is. Um, you've heard, probably heard the expression that people will dig a hole twice as deep and wide as they need to plant something. Well, I take that a step further. I go until I quit hitting rock or super compacted stuff. Um, and uh, often in certain parts of my garden, that means I'm going to dig a hole that's more than a foot. Uh, it'll be a foot deep by a foot wide up probably, but then I'll pound the digging bar at the bottom even further. Sometimes I get these sweet landscaping rocks too. Yeah, how about that? But anyways, um, um, I'll do this and then I'll end up backfilling with uh, compost. So I'm basically, uh, I mean, I'm not not backfilling, I'm mixing compost in uh, substantially. Now, doing this will help make my soil, A, more fertile locally in this one spot, and then it will also make it drain better. But if you did this on flat ground and you really had a horrible rainy season, there is the potential that you could be creating like a, it'd be the same as burying a five gallon bucket that didn't drain at all. You might drown your plants if you're on flat ground that didn't drain. My slope is uh, probably saving me on this. Um, but that's all I do to drop in a plant, and it works great for us. Um, and, you know, my whole garden's not like as bad as this one I just showed you, but it takes 15 minutes to dig a hole in a brand new spot, or it, it can. Um, but, like, the plant we just looked at right there, I mean, I, I didn't do anything special for that this year. I planted there before. But uh, the other thing we do is we do top dress the entire thing, which I'll have a future video on that. I'll put a card in the right or in the description when we get that. But on the right is the uh, top layer. On the left is that orange inorganic garbage. But um, this has been working great for us. Uh, we've had this vegetable garden for about four years now. Um, I have, uh, you know, no problem getting enough food for us to eat in the summer. Like, we're satisfied with our results. Um, we're not preserving and canning stuff, although we do make some hot sauce um, and freeze some peppers. But, uh, you know, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. But if anybody needs any uh, landscaping rock, shoot me an email. Maybe we can work out something. I'm pretty sure I got several fire pits right now on that you know, back wall. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Ask questions in the comments. Um, I like to try to answer them. And um, other than that, y'all have a good day. Thanks.